Welcome to another lesson with Kumalo M. I hope you've enjoyed our lessons that you've uploaded. Uh, today we are going to look at Valley Climates as you will be writing your paper one. So this topic is in paper one. So it's Valley Climates. So let's take a look at Valley Climates. Now, what is it required from you as a learner for the exam? So on the examination guideline, the examiners will expect you to know what is slope aspects, the definition of slope aspect, the definition and the definition of slope aspect, the effect on the distribution of temperature in a valley, the definition and development of catabatic winds, anabatic winds, the inversion layer, the thermal belt, the frost pocket, radiation fog, and we also have to look at the influence and impact of on human activities looking at the economic, the social, the environmental, where we look at settlement and farming. Now, there are, some, there are some definitions that I want we want you to know here in Gauteng Grid 12. It will be the anabatic winds. When we talk about anabatic winds, we talk about a local wind which blows up the length of the valley during the day because of rising air. So, the anabatic winds, those are winds that blow up the valley slope during the day. And then downslope wind, we talk about local wind which blow down the valley, the sides of the valley during the night. Those are catabatic winds. Now, frost pocket, we talk about an area of cold air reaching a dew point temperature below freezing at the bottom of the valley. This may occur on clear calm winter evenings or winter nights we also go back to catabatic winds where we say catabatic winds we also look at catabatic winds where we talk about local winds which blow down the slope of the valley during the night because of course subsiding air so that's catabatic winds we talk about microclimate is a climate of a small area that is different to the climate of its surrounding three factors contribute to the valley microclimates and then we look at radiation fog we have to understand what radiation fog is radiation fog we are talking a fog is that form of night under clear calm condition fog is caused by condensation in the air that has cooled due to dew point temperature as a result of loss of heat through terrestrial radiation now radiation fog is more like mist so that is what we are talking about then we've got a shadow zone a shadow zone grid 12 will be the part of the valley or slope that does not receive any sunlight we call that a shadow zone a slope aspect refers to the direction to which a slope faces so a direction to which a face slope a slope faces is known as slope aspect then we've got temperature inversion temperature inversion is an increase of temperature with altitude rather than the usual the, the usual decrease and then we've got thermal belt the thermal belt grade 12 it is the la warm layer of air midway up the valley with cold air below as a result of inversion of temperature and then lastly we talk about upslope winds yes we know that our upslope winds are the anabatic winds because they blow up the valley slope during the day so down slope winds they are catabatic winds upslope winds they are anabatic winds now i want us to look at the slope aspect grade 12. now the slope aspect now as we have defined that it is the direction in which the slope faces in relation to the sun now we have the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere so it differs we say in the northern hemisphere in the southern hemisphere the north facing slopes they receive direct sunlight and in the southern hemisphere the north facing slopes are receiving direct sunlight while in the northern hemisphere the south facing slopes are receiving direct sunlight now let's look at the weather associated with the southern hemisphere and slope aspect now north facing slope the north facing slopes are hot guys now there is a confusion when it comes to the south facing and the north facing so i want you to take it like this grade 12. let's say here i've got Kumalu here 
and I've got Mr. Geography here. Now, Mr. Geography here, Kumalo here. So if I'm going to say a slope that is facing Kumalo, it will be the Mr. Geography side. And if I'm asking now the slope that is facing Mr. Geography, Mr. Geography, that will be Kumalo, uh, Kumalo, where Kumalo is. So it's actually the opposite side. Now, the north facing slope will be the southern side. The south facing slope will be the northern side. So it's just an opposite of one another. Now, the north facing slopes are hot sunny and dry in the southern hemisphere they receive more direct sunlight smaller surface area is heated thus it is warmer soils are warmer as they are in the sunny zone the farmers have to select a slope which is best suitable for the certain types of crops so it's very important because the farmers have to look, look for a proper slope where they can uh, plant their crops so that they can grow warmer part of the valley is called the thermal belt so the warmer part of the valley is called the thermal belt the effect of aspect is greater in the in wind in the winter and places further from the equator so the effect which means the the consequences of those uh, climatological questions uh, uh, climatological uh, phenomena they are more intense in winter and then in the south facing slope now the south facing slopes are cooler shady and retain moist soils are cooler on the south facing slope as they are in the shadow zone the area is shadow zone on the south facing slope are, are heated only by reflection so they only receive sunlight through the process of reflection and then we look at slope aspect we look at the orientation of the slope the impact change during the winter and the summer season because of migration of the pressure systems because remember our pressure systems they follow what they follow the ITCZ migration so now they will give you an ex a, a diagram in an exam and they will expect you to interpret the diagram so now let's look at the impact of slope aspect human tends to build their houses on the north facing slopes because they are warmer so people will build their houses where the slope are warmer so it will be the north facing slope crops that require less moist and more sunlight will grow on the north facing slope while on the south facing slope they will grow uh, 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 crops that do not uh, need uh, that need more moisture and uh, 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 less sunlight now the south facing slopes too cold for humans to build settlements so the south facing slope in the southern hemisphere they are very cold so they can't people can't build their houses there and then trees and shade loving plants such as ferns will grow on the south facing slope meaning that on the south facing slope they will be experiencing what the trees and the shade loving plants will be planted there now as we continue um the following thing that you have to bear in mind and have an idea of before you can even go to the exam now it is the anabatic and the catabatic winds so you must be able to differentiate between the catabatic and the anabatic winds. so the cross section of an anabatic wind is here and here is the cross section of an anabatic of the catabatic wind so kata means night Anna means day so anabatic winds those are the winds that blow up the valley slope during the day and catabatic winds are those slope are those slope winds uh, valley winds that blow down the valley slope during the night now let's look at the characteristics of the catabatic winds now let's start with the anabatic winds so that we can make our understanding better now the anabatic winds the air above the slope warms because there is less dense and rises on the slope so the air above the slope it it warms now as it is warming up then it rises and remember it is less dense this is a warm wind which blow up a steep slope 
or mountainous site driven by heating of the slope through insulation. So the insulation, our sun, our incoming solar radiation will heat the slope and now that slope, what will happen? The air will be heated and it will become warm and it will start rising. Then it forms the, the anabatic winds. It occurs during the day when the slopes are warm due to insulation. And then let's look at the, the, the impact of the anapartic winds. The rising air removes pollution in the valley to higher latitude. So now, Gritsov, you have to understand that now, as this air is, uh, is, is rising above the valley, now it's going to remove the pollution that is found within the valley. Then, catapartic winds, uh, those are the winds that blow down the valley slope at night. Usually in the diagram, in the exam, they're going to give you a picture. They're going to give you a picture grid of, of what I'm talking about. Now, you have to look at the symbol of the sun or the symbol of the moon. In, in other diagrams, they like to give that, like that. Or the, the examiner can give you a free simple sketch where there's an arrow pointing down. So obviously, when there's an arrow pointing down, that simple means that those are the catapartic winds and they blow down the valley slope during the night. Yes. And then the air above the slope becomes cold and dense, and then it tends to do what? To descend. Obviously, the air that is dominant at night, it is cold air. So cold air is dominant at night. So hence, it is going to, it's good, it's going to do what? It's going to descend. As the air becomes colder and colder, it descends down the valley slope or the valley sides. This is a wind that carries high density air for a high elevation down a slope under the force of gravity. What is force of gravity? That air that brings everything to come down. Now, it occurs at night when the slopes cool down due to terrestrial radiation. So both of them, they, they form due to, to terrestrial radiation. But now during the day, terrestrial radiation causes air to to move up. So our terrestrial radiation, our air is blowing up the valley slope. It is rising because it is warm. And then at night, our cold air is dense, so it blows down the valley slope. Now, what are the impacts of that? Is that the descending air is cold and captures the pollution on the valley slope, which can result in the development of smoke or frost. So the catabatic winds, they can give us frog, uh, uh, frost or fog Please not frog, but frost, frost or fog or smog. So that will come as a result of the catabatic wind. Now, furthermore, grade 12, you have to understand the inversion layer, the frost pocket, and radiation fog. But how do we get to understand those three uh, 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 um, aspects in uh, climate and weather. Now, we understand them through what we call their characteristics. Now, let's look at the characteristics of an inversion layer. The characteristics of an inversion layer, grade 12, it will be what? It occurs during the calm, cold, and clear winter night. So, the inversion layer will occur during the calm, cold, and clear winter night. Secondly, the characteristic of inversion layer, we know that when cold air drains down the valley slopes and collects at the valley floor, then the inversion layer is going to form. Warm air is displaced upward to, the, to form an inversion layer in the middle valley. So in the mid valley, this air, warm air is going to be displaced upward and then it's going to, be, it's going to form the inversion layer. Now, it is a layer of warm air trapped between two layers of cold air. Remember, the, as, the air, as the air goes, the air is blowing down the valley slope, it will cause the air that is in the slope, in the valley, to rise. And when it is forced to rise, it will not uh, be displaced out, out of the valley, but it will be halfway the valley and it's going to be trapped between a layer of cold air and a layer of cold air above it. And then we say, now, we say it is a layer of warm air trapped between two layers of cold air and results in the development of the thermal belt. 
This can lead to the formation of acid rain, which corrode buildings and damage crops. You can see, so because of the invasion layer, it can lead into acid rain. Acid rain is what? It's that type of rainfall that will mix up with the chemicals in the uh, 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 um, in a what in the atmosphere those uh, 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 fossil fuels that we burn so they will uh, 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 mix up with the water uh, 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 on the atmosphere and then it will come back as uh, acid rain for the precipitation now we look at frost pocket it's the low lying area or the valley flow so we'll find it there at the valley flow now the low lying area or the valley flow where the frost occurs more frequently than in the surrounding high lying areas so the frost will occur mostly in the frost pocket which is down there in the valley flow and then this is normally after a dry clear cold night the cold air drains down the valley slope if dew point temperature is below freezing point it condenses to ice crystal so when it condenses to ice crystal then it forms frost forming frost pockets where the cold air collects and then we've got another one which we call the radiation fog now the radiation fog is on a cold clear cloudless night when rapid terrestrial radiation occurs the ground becomes cool at night the air above the ground also cools when this air is below dew point temperature which is above zero degrees celsius it causes water vapor to condense around the dust and smoke particles in the atmosphere to create what we call the radiation fog so that is how the radiation fog forms you have to understand this and when they ask you uh, in paragraph of uh, cosmic eight lines explain that the formation of radiation in a valley you have to explain this in the morning the sun hits the surface the warm air rises and evaporates the combined with the pollution in the atmosphere it forms what we call the smoke so smoke is this mixture of fog and smoke then it gives us what we call fog and then lastly grade 12 we know that we have to understand the impacts on human and the environment of these weather phenomena. now let's look at women uh, 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 humans now under humans frost pocket can cause people to settle mid slope in the the belt and the smoke results in poor visibility and is a health hazard it it can cause traffic accidents due to poor visibility it affects people health for example it will, might lead into what into respiratory illnesses so this is how now these three are going to affect humans in terms of uh, the humans and the environment uh, uh, in terms of cross pocket and radiation fog and then how does these uh, weather phenomena uh, 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 have an impact on the environment that traps it traps pollutants from the industries in the area so due to this invasion layer these will be these pollutants will be trapped halfway the valley now what will happen now is that as they are trapped they will lead into acid rain acid rain now occurs and acid rain damages fiona and flora now when we talk about fauna and the flora we are talking about the vegetation cover that we find there so it's going to be our vegetation cover that is going to be destroyed there it affects farmers if frost sensitive crops are grown on the valley floor then it affects what farmers so plants that are not frost sensitive are going to uh, be damaged because what happens now we know that any crop that freezes is going it expands in size so as it expands what is going to happen is the cell of that plant is going to burst open and when it burst opens then the, the plant the poor plant is not going to grow again and then it damages natural vegetation and crops so there's a damage to natural vegetation and crops i hope this explains your valley climates i hope you will ace that session that you are going to meet in your examination get well prepared thank you so much this is from me kumalo m the geography sangoma have a lovely day